you sign them through your cell phones and go in the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Into the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> How many is there any additions or deletions? No, there aren't. Kevin, let's go ahead and roll with you so you can. Unless you want to stay all day. <laughs> no, thanks. Um, which would you want to go over the bridge quotes first? I don't know which one was on there first. It doesn't matter, just roll well, with you. We can, get, we can go over these bridge quotes first. So, we had some damages here um, last summer and this past, I guess you'd call it winter, last fall, the end of the calendar year. The two bridges in the county, um, Mill Street in Paisley, the bridge at the end of. Uh, our county road, and then um, on Pitcher Lane, about two miles north of um, um, 31, Route 31 there on Pitcher Lane, right where the gravel starts. Those two bridges uh, damaged to the point where <coughs> they need to be repaired through contract. So I actually had, um, uh, our engineer draw up these two bridges very similarly similar damages um, as a <coughs> um, co-opted job so that we could get entice contractors from out here. Three quotes, uh, one from Coral Construction, one from Columbia River Contractors, and one from Gadget Construction. Gadget Construction is the apparent low bidder. Um, $184,536.25 for both structures. And you can see there in front of you separately, the Paisley structure is $111,046 and the Silver Lake structure is $73,490. Gage of construction is who fixed the bridge in flush when we had that similar problem two, two seasons ago. They did an excellent job for us, so there's and they are they, they are the little bidder. Um, everybody, all three contractors bid on the exact same construction documents. Um, so that we have uh, two jobs and uh, separately quoted so that <clears throat> what's possible to re recoup from the insurance companies, we'd have to have that separate. separate. So, you guys have any questions? I <clears throat> um, Traffic control, I can see, is it, it's actually partially moved out on the gauge of construction. So, basically, you won't have to mess with any of the traffic control or anything they take care of. All yeah, this is, this, <clears throat> this is a total contract job my um, road authorities um, responsibility in this is just be to ensure through inspection that they're adhering to the design gotcha. so but like I said um, and, and we will we'll either myself or um, Mark or Tyler will visit this project throughout the time period but what these fellows did over here on that structure and in, in uh, flush they're top quality outfit so um, sounds good I'd like to I don't know is it are you guys gonna um, vote on this tomorrow to go I'd like to at least be able to call them today and tell them who the apparent little bidder is maybe not that you awarded it but I'm fine with doing it today yeah or through consensus or how, or how <coughs> I'd like to call them back because literally even, even though it's just one day time is of the essence right now with this cost of steel and supplies and all that right, stuff no, so. absolutely. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll make an actual formal motion uh, for approval and awarding of the bid for bridge for bridges both in Paisley and on Pitcher Road 
um, to gauge a construction LLC. Sorry. Motion's been made and seconded. Do we have a further discussion? I'm going to open a little bit of a can of worms. So, okay. um, I'm, I'm not going against your deal at all. But this is the third or fourth bridge that's been damaged in the last couple of years. And we were originally didn't sue for civil damages. Um, but what's happened is it's cost the county close to a quarter of a million dollars altogether, maybe even a little bit more than that. Um, I think from this point on, maybe we need to look into that um, because we can't afford to lose $250,000 worth of apartment because that's $250,000 that isn't going to road work. And so it affects the whole county. Um, nobody wants to sue for civil damages, but um, we need to try to recoup some of these costs. And I don't know. I just wanted to discuss that with you guys. Um, it's definitely a can of worms. Um, it's, it's sad because when we are spending these amount of dollars, and to your point, not being able to put these dollars on the road, it's because, at least from what I can see, neglig negligence on the part of another one person or two or three that you know, make these mistakes, and it's costing us and the taxpayers of Lake County a tremendous amount. So there's a balance in there somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where that is. It's a good thing to keep at the forefront of our minds as we go through this, but it, it needs to be addressed. I just wanted to make sure the public knows how expensive these bridges are when somebody runs into them. Yeah. It's one thing if you're swerving for a deer or something and hit a bridge accidentally, then drink a beer and drag them down the road and train them the bridge. Yeah. You know. Um, <coughs> My thought. I, I can keep you updated because this, I mean, even though we're awarding this, uh, thank you for that. Um, I can keep you updated on what the actual balance will be at the end because this information goes to individual insurance um, claims reps and then we get notified of what the minimum personal liability is on everybody's insurance. Um, minimum or maximum? Well, I guess I'm calling the minimum because twenty-five thousand dollars is the is this to my understanding is the state minimum and that's what we experienced in the past was that that's, <coughs> what, that's the dollar amount that was available for us through the actual insurance claim process. And Jay might be able to speak more on that than, than myself, but I can keep you all updated uh, once I know those actual dollar amounts. Um, <coughs> and then we can we can go from there. There needs to be accountability on these issues. I mean, yeah, there we're we're saying that accidents took place at these, but yeah, there I would I guess that's a subjective argument that it's an accident. An accident is something that could have been controlled or maybe at least could have been avoided. And irregardless of that, we're still picking up the tap. Anyways, moving on. I'll keep you updated as I know what the numbers are. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. All in favor for the quote from what's the motion? Agent uh, construction. Agent. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, let's go. So the second item I had on the agenda, uh, <coughs> I apologize for getting it to you late here this morning. I just received it. so. It is a template document. It is a master agreement for a fund exchange program. It used to be called it used to be called surface transportation. Now it's called surface transportation block grant. There's been several different names. Maybe you've heard. Um, and we have talked about these dollars <coughs> in our road advisory uh, meetings. Um, this is this is agreement. To, for the process, this is not the agreement for the actual dollar amount. Um, I'll get that. I can get that to you. Um, 
later. I pointed out when I handed this to you, gentlemen, um, the most important kind of part of this document is number 4A. These dollars will be uh, transferred through the fund exchange to us on 94 cents on the dollar. Um, but then from this point on, uh, and we talked about that last year in the road advisory, they had changed the administrative costs of this fund exchange and future block grants, or the transportation block grants will be 90 cents on the dollar. And plus or minus, um, each fiscal year, it is somewhere around $300,000 that we, we have available to do this fund exchange. I don't, I don't believe, I know, I know Commissioner Schulenberger hasn't, but I, I don't believe that we've done this since you guys have been commissioners uh, no, either. I don't think any of these. So 2018 was the last year that I <coughs> officially did the fund exchange program because at that time, going into 2019, if I remember correctly, and going through that budget process, we knew that there were other dollars that were going to come into our budget for availability and, and use. These dollars can stay in this program for up to three years, and that's why I'm drawing them out now. We, we didn't know what the outlook was going to be for 21, so we just allowed those dollars to build up for three years. This would be the third year, so we need to receive them before June 30th of 2022, which is fiscal year 21. So that's probably why we haven't done this agreement. It's a three-year agreement. It's a standard It's a standard thing. Um, it's just that we haven't done this with this board. So. Gotcha. And then, and then uh, again, I gave it to you on short notice. So if you guys have any questions, you can let me know what they are. But and then Melanie, the, the last page, they actually signed this one <coughs> as a interagency agreement between Lake County and Oregon Department of Transportation for these dollars. How busy year we to be a pretty busy tomorrow? Um, I would say so. Do we want to go ahead and get this out of the way too? Since we're here. Sure. I have a motion. I make a motion to accept the uh, master agreement master grant agreement with Oregon Department of Transportation for the fund exchange program. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Go forth and build some bridges. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll work at it. <laughs> <clears throat> Judy's not here, so we're going to postpone that one. Okay. Kevin Hawk. Nikki's not here. Does Jay want to run that through? Or? I can if you don't mind. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so there are several of our grants that need an equity plan for the county. And so Nikki put this together to help out and have on file. And so we are eligible to apply for these federal dollars. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. She got the language from CIS. Mr. Bailey has reviewed it. Um, he had one minor change, and then we have it before you. So on the uh, on the work session um, agenda, as well as the. Uh, um, topic cover sheet it's referred to as the diversity and equal opportunity access but um, the actual policy says equal opportunity and access is there anything that um, should we have the diversity piece on the, the actual policy itself I can ask her to add that um... it just says equal opportunity and access I don't know if they're if the grants require something that addresses the actual diversity. Do they require it to be named such that you know be covering 
that I see it is mentioned in other places mm -hmm. in the actual uh, policy. Several times. I have no opinion. I don't know. Yeah. You know. And uh, equal opportunity access is part of the diversity. I mean, we've always had these practices, you know, for the most part anyway. So I just not on right. paper, right? That's that's what they're wanting. They want us to put it in right. I think it brings up diversity enough that I know I would find that would have been that's fine. My personal opinion, but I just noticed I'm good it with whatever you want to do. Uh, it's perfectly fine. I, it's one of those things. I guess uh yeah. I mean it's, you're right, it's written one way here and another way. Papers. Why don't we just go ahead and add it if you guys don't mind? Sure. Opportunity, diversity, and access yeah. to the policy, and then <laughs> it doesn't hurt. The title. We good with that? That's fine. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Darwin, are you going to take more than fifteen minutes? No, I can be pretty quick. I've heard ten. that before. Yeah, ten. I would love to be back for the rest of my day. So we'll <laughs> right I'll just stay right here and I'll speak loudly. So the uh, land sale um, is up, meaning that we had in October um, 53 properties deeded to the county. I uh, prepared the attachment A, which is the list, which uh, is included um, in your board order as um, attachment to your order which in every other year you guys have approved a one-page order that says, hey, we're going to have the auction on a certain date, um, which this year would be May 2nd at 10 a.m. The list is color-coded with um, a key at the bottom, which has that those in pink or um, core habitat. Um, it says core area, that's core sage grouse habitat. Sorry, I didn't explain that further before. Um, there's a property that's out by the man cap off Roberta, which is actually um, kind of surrounded by the rest of our camp, so that works out as a good one to hold. Um, there's there's only one a home on our list this year, and then there's um, a three that are uh, low density sage grouse habitat, all of which are possible holds, which you guys ought to determine today um, for approval tomorrow. Um, I, I kind of leave that up to you guys. Land use wise, I think it's it's probably best to hold off on those ones and not sell them. Um, even the low density. Yeah, even the low density ones. And uh, you know, Commissioner uh, Schoenberg and I spoke a little bit yesterday, and we've spoken in the past, uh, the rest of you that that uh, we ought to pursue working with the other agencies on on trying to you know uh, you know exchange or you know. Uh, sell or whatever we can these lots that we've held for many years in some cases off of a foreclosure sale um, that, That's how we've acquired them a lot are up um, so A couple of these are up, you know by Heart Mountain and others that we just needed and, and that's not a discussion really for today um, Certainly not in 15 minutes, but we can certainly go over that at a future date to to try to make some exchanges on properties that are really landlocked or up maybe Heart Mountain or Stuff that's off the plush cutoff road, which a couple of these ones are again, where they um, we won't, by land use reasons, be approving any dwellings out there. So even if we were to sell them, best they could be used for is grazing or or maybe light recreational, you know, kind of camping situation um, without you know structures and stuff. So um, other than that, you know, there, there's a um, this will definitely be a lower year than years past because we only had one home. Um, in other years, we've had you know three to five homes uh, average, and so um, they obviously bring in a whole lot more revenue. Um, I will say last year's sale was was really good, and we've spoke on that before. That all but five lots were actually 
um, auction the day of the auction, and most went for over the real market value, um, which was was wonderful for the county and for the other uh, districts that we help get money back to them for the three or four closure sales. So this is a list. I I would suggest um, in my um, summary it says eight properties for a holding, but I'd actually include those three that are in low density uh, for a total of, of 11 to hold off on the sale. I would then change this color-coded um, list to just remove those ones um, for what we advertise to the public, which we have to advertise in the paper four consecutive weeks, um, a list of all the properties, and it will say the number still, but it'll say held. Um, so the f how many total acres of low density or high density um, for core, it looks like 105 acres, and then for low density, um, 48 and a third acres. Yeah. So a total of about 150 acres of being held back, um, which you know most of those are tens, couple of, uh, two forties, and and uh, a couple of smaller ones, but. So yeah, it's. Do we have any commercial or industrial land on there? Um, there were a couple, but they're the OVL lots, so they're they're going to be the 125 or sorry, 135 by 25 feet lots. Oh, so they're out yeah. off Roberta. Um, there's nothing up in you know Crystal Valley area that's commercial. Almost all these are A2 or R1. There's a couple up at Dead Horse and Campbell again that that. Uh, Lake you find the estates that's up there. There's it looks like four of them <coughs> up there this year. So um, yeah, unfortunately there's nothing real great. Oh the, the man camp's a commercial lot that we can, you know, I suggest we hold on this on this list. So how, how big is the lot next to the man camp? It's just, again it's an OBL, yeah, it's the twenty five by hundred and thirty five foot. But it abuts against our man camp. Yeah, it's within the man camp area. Yeah. yeah. It's just one of those in holdings that uh, it's great that we pick it up now and then eventually you know, consolidate with the rest of the, the camp there. Operation. So. It's right on the roadside. It's yeah, it's one lot off of the, the, it's in the back. It's on the back side of the, the block that abuts the road. But yeah, there's an alleyway and then this lock. And then what would be you know, the road west of Roberta if that road were ever to be developed. But not likely. Yeah, my thought on some of these, uh, you know, <coughs> lots that are up on Heart Mountain and whatnot is, maybe we can get into some discussions with some of the agencies, and, such as the Fish and Wildlife, you know, look to see if there's some type of a, if they're interested or some type of an exchange possibly, um, you know, get into maybe a three-way agency exchange where maybe we could gain some ground near the ski area. I that might make sense, uh, et cetera. Don't know if people will be interested, don't know if we can do it or not, but it was done in the past. So the Forest Service gave the county uh, its area in exchange uh, the county gave land to the Fish and Wildlife on our mountain. The only last thing I'll, I'll say is that the, the one house um, was owned by local folks and uh, it just needs to be um, we're going to work with them is my intent to, to try to get some of the stuff that's still in the house removed um, and a cutoff date of April 1st to have everything removed and then just say sorry we're, we're done having to remove stuff. Which one is that? Like? That's the um, number is number 22-47. Um, it's the only one in yellow on your list. Yeah, yeah. And the address is on the sheet there. So, so I'll, I'll work with them to to you know, get stuff out of, the, out of the house still. Um, got a volunteer crew that can come and help get some mail out to us. And uh, we'll get keys and I'll show it up until the day of the auction. And I'm certain I'm going to sell it for the auction. <coughs> because of its starting price of 55000 and change, I, I'm sure it'll go over that and we'll probably end up having to sell that one on contract unless someone's got a whole lot of cash because we do, you know. Payments within 24 hours, or we do a contract sale, which is a third down, and then a third in the next two years. So, anyways, yeah. 
Um, no action today, but yeah, tomorrow, you know, approve the order and um, and then just maybe we change that, you know, to eight or leave it at eight and sell the ones that are in um, low density or or uh, change it to eleven and, and hold on those those ones that are in low density. Yeah. So, and again, if after this meeting you individually want to meet, I could go over those three or, and the other ones that we're thinking. The rest of the lots, you know, I don't see why land use wise we wouldn't at least the planning commission can entertain approving the ones that are in A2 agriculture. Um, none of them are real large lots, they're all you know 40 or less, and they you know none of them are completely surrounded by anybody's you know farm operation or ranch operation. So we could likely entertain you know approving those. And, and a, a number of these are in R1 rural residential. Um, it's always explained in the the, for the ones in the forest, use some of those won't be ever approved for a dwelling. So people are buying those for recreational purposes of like dead horse and camel makes. So that they can up at camel or dead horse, you can't put a cap on those. No, I mean you could definitely build a structure under 200 square feet and store some things in it. And I've always said if, if the weather's bad, you want to stay in that overnight. Probably not going to. No one's going to be up there to stop you. But it's not to be a cabin, you know, with lights and running water and stuff like that yeah legal yeah not a legal cabin i mean it, the force use zone just doesn't allow for dwellings unless you've got a lot of acreage or you can qualify for a um a lot of record dwelling which none of these lots would qualify for that you have to own prior to 85. so once we obviously it broke the chain of title for somebody owning it prior to 85 so and you have to be within a certain distance of a paper and there's nothing up at Dead Ocean Campbell would qualify for a dwelling. So. This, uh, eight, this uh, 22-47, mm -hmm. it also has vehicles on it yeah. that are Well, incredible. before the reversal by Luba, they had it arranged that Alan and his group would come and grab those two, but now he's not, he can't take anything more so that was his word as of yesterday he won't be able to take those if he wanted to so they'll either stay or still before april 1st we'll try to figure out a way or even after that i, I may try to figure out a way to get them off there. there is a large water bell obviously with the town on that lot as well which could be as much as 8500 is what i heard yesterday so i don't have the printout yet from the town but it's a lot and the, when we sell this those people have to know that and See if the town will be willing to budget all on, on that, but that's up to the town. That's their program. So. <clears throat> Anything else? Commissioners have any other questions? No. Um, all right, gentlemen, thank you. I'll have more conversations we had around selling some of the blocks for the week. We're going to get her done in 14 minutes. With one minute to spare, can you get up there? <laughs> 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 no Are you guys here tomorrow, though? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you an update tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, John. Mr. Bowen. Good morning. Good morning. Come on up and have a seat. Yeah. We've got two chairs in here. No. Oh, we need one. We'll turn that one. I didn't know that. I might just get a little closer to you. Okay, I might have died. Oh. No, no. Go ahead and state your name for the record. Yeah. Jerry Beaumont, Superintendent Warren Free Correctional Facility. Yep. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, so, kind of. Wanted to go over everything we've been doing recently. Um, over the last couple months, um, staff out at Water Creek have been working on um, transitional community unit. The purpose of that unit is to kind of help ADICs, the ones that are going back out in the community. We're looking at a two year span um, to essentially release back out in the community to help them better prepare themselves, especially some of the ones that have been incarcerated for you know, 16, 20 years. Now they're they're hitting a minimum for that last last little bit of their sentence um, and kind of 
trying to figure that out and work that environment a little bit more. Um, what we kind of did with that concept of that unit is we took everything down a single bunk. Um, we tried to kind of normalize and humanize as much as possible. There could actually be like a small kitchen and dining area in there for them. Um, we're working with VHS for any type of like substance abuse um, treatment, something small that we don't currently have VHS at Warner Creek. That's something we're trying to work towards. Um, because that would give us more positions and give us a little bit um, better position in the state too as far as the facilities that um, we currently can't take any of those guys, but they we get some that have MH codes um, that have been you know dropped off or whatever the case or they've had treatment they send them to us. Um, so we're trying to find more options for those guys when they do get there so that way they don't have issues and go back out. Um, so we're planning on spring this year, we'll be able to open that up. Pending COVID, because we're also using it as a quarantine unit right now in between kind of construction. So we're, we're flexible on that one. Um, some of the other things we're doing, a big push right now is recruitment um, for the facility. I've got big five currently in background or assessment or ESOP or NTN phase for that. We've got nine hard positions open we've had. Um, with retirement and everything else, um, we've had a couple more people leave, um, but we are staying stable at around 80% staffing, which is good. Um, as far as right now goes for us, that keeps us just above that line where we're not paying a bunch out mandatory overtime, it's burning staff out, and all those, those bad things. Um, so we're keeping staffing pretty consistent, which is nice. Um, we're still working on field trips for the community as far as some of those guys have had longer incarcerations. We've actually got three right now we propose um, that are going to go kind of through a background. Then they'll get voted on and they'll work com with community corrections on that um, before we bring them out. And those guys are, are ones that have gate clearance that could be on a work crew normally anyways or fire crew that we would bring them out to the community. It's just we're taking a different approach to them. Um, Usually ones that, like I said, that they've done like 16, 20 years. Um, they've been to a medium, and now they're at a minimum, and it just kind of falls in line with that transitional community and everything else we're doing. Um, we've done a few things for staff recently on for staff wellness. We've had some TVs in the break room and stuff like that, just little things. Um, we've started, we've been fortunate enough to start a potlucks again, although we call them COVID months. Because <laughs> with the state, we have to follow certain guidelines and everything else. Um, and We've been successful in that, so that's been that's been good as far as staff goes. We actually had a bake sale yesterday. That went really well. Everything sold out. Um, so a lot of a lot of positive things. Working with the management team too there, um, just kind of moving forward and trying me trying to get stable. For one up there, I'm also covering the security manager, which we're currently hiring for. If you know anybody, um, so that position is open right now. Hopefully, we can get that kind of short up in the next couple of weeks and then keep moving forward like we were. Um, it was great having Mr. Kane up here for the time we had. Very fortunate for that, for the experience and everything else. Um, the staff up there, in my experience, are, are great people. Um, I like the community, I like the town. Um, so I was fortunate enough to stay as well. Um, I have some experience from some of the larger facilities like Snake. Um, so I'll be able to take some of that, I think, and help out the little Warner Creek locally and kind of get us kind of on the same page with some of the other stuff the other institutions are doing at the statewide level. Um, and I think that's really going to help them, especially as far as um, just how we're perceived and stuff like that will be good. Um, kind of getting us to a middle. Yeah. Commissioner, can I some questions? Just tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? Um, Where are you from? So, originally, I was actually I was born in Ontario. Um, lived in Idaho most of my life, kind of right on the border, like most people do in that area. Um, so, I, uh, you know, high school, normal, typical stuff. Um, went into the military um, in 2003, got out in 2007 in the Navy. Um, so I'm glad they beat the army this year. That was a, that was a great thing for me since Mr. Kane was army. So I got to got to poke that stick on the way out. Um, after the military, did some college for for a while. Um, decided to go into corrections. I had family members, stuff like that, and worked out really well for me. Always wanted to do law enforcement or something similar to that. Corrections is a great. I mean, it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can go 
community, you can go to state, you can do all different kinds of things, corrections. It's not just basic, just not um, a narrow scope of just like security. Um, there's a ton of job you know, opportunities, which is always good. So I've been very fortunate in that aspect. Um, worked in Snake River for about five years as an officer promoted went up to Corporal Sergeant Lieutenant. Um, I think I hit Lieutenant by 2016, right in that time frame. Maybe 2017. Um, was a part of the Statewide Honor Guard, um, which was a great experience. And started really developing myself as Lieutenant. Um, I worked special housing at Snake, which that's where we housed um, at the time, because that population is adjusted, it's about 348. Um, and that's all pesky little five guys. So complete opposite of what we have out here at Work Creek. Um, I knew long term for that. Um, was part of that process and kind of downsizing somewhere I knew. And then um, the impacts of long term isolation while I was there. Um, after that, I was assigned to minimum in Snake River. I, I managed that for about a year and a half. Um, was able to work with fire crew, fire crew commander stuff as far as my role there. Uh, I worked on a lot of different initiatives there as far as just normalizing the humanizing the environment at the minimum facility at Snake and it's co located. Um, that was one that, to me, it was great. It's small facility, it's great. It's a big workforce for the state. Uh, they do canteen for the state. They do a lot of fire crew stuff out of there, um, our physical plants out of there. So, really, I tried to emphasize with helping those guys out. <coughs> I had a lot of credit with them, especially when COVID hit, when they were having some of the ICs go down in, in full canteen for the entire state, not just half. Um, that kind of helped me out just being able to talk to them because they were working the extra shifts, they were pulling more time, they were getting burnt out. So being able to communicate with guys helped. Um, and then a little bit after that, I was fortunate enough um, speaking with Brad, he asked me about coming up here. Um, you guys found out you weren't closing. I was part of kind of the conversation with you words because I wanted to come help out because I knew it was going to be it was difficult on the staff at that time. But um, after you guys, after one free time, other stayed open, I could ask to come up and, and kind of go into the ISF position and see how that looked for me. So I come up on that and then here I am today. <laughs> so uh, we, we talked to Mr. Kane when he was in his interim basis there, and uh, he was looking, you know, we're at we were kind of in that phase where they took away some of the programs mm -hmm. and now that we're staying, uh, he was looking to get some of those started again. Do you got any updates on any of the programs or what your, what your goals are as far as moving forward? Yeah, like I said, the, the big one right now is that transitional community unit and, and programming wise expanding, trying to get VHS. We did get, I believe, a grant statewide for heavy equipment operating school or something for to um, access for the ICs to be a part of that. So we're going to look into that. Um, OC, which is Oregon Corrections Enterprises Call Center, obviously left before. We've been in contact with them. They were looking at the next couple of months. We're actually going to start bumping up our population again. Uh, so right now we're currently sitting at like 230. Um, our max is 400. They want to see a capacity of about 300 for us to Get that call center active again, and they've got to bring resources and there's logistical pieces behind that because they essentially took our call center and moved it up to Deer Ridge, um, and it's going to stay there. But the bright side of that is the call center that we're getting back is actually a little bit better. Um, it's better. Um, it's a different capacity as far as it's not like a traditional call center. It's more computer based, so it'll be able to teach those guys better skills. Um, it's a little bit better paying, and it's not a traditional cold call. The contacts that the AC will get off of this one will be somebody who's expressed interest in, in the product or whatever it is, and they'll be able to contact them and talk, have kind of that discussion with them instead of just cold calling, you know, lists. So it'll be a little bit better situation. We're hopeful that it'll, it'll keep better retention too on this one. Um, so it should, should be a good outcome for us. Any plans for firefighting crews? Yes. Um, so we did last year. We kind of we didn't have anybody officially trained, so we did camp support. Although they were out all year, which was um, local here, um, we're going to do one suppression, one camp support this year, and then um, hopefully next year bump it back up to two camp supports, which 
than something you've traditionally done. Um, it depends on population. We're, like I said, we're slated for 400 right now uh, for our max population. It's been higher than that. <coughs> Um, so it's actually scaled what they're supposed to be, um, and that was because the beds were removed. Um, I think we'll actually train more than we need, and that's usually what we end up doing. So that way, if um, ODF asks us for more resources, we've got available, or we've got alternates, we, we've got options in that capacity. So um, you will see us having an actual fire crew this year, though, again, for, for some type of line. That's great. Suppression. Yeah. And then will we see uh, potentially some work crews out in the uh, yes. public? If, if, uh, are they for hire? So, like in the past? or Yeah, it's it's that one I talked to the Tams um, the other day. We're going to try to get out the spring and do some volunteers and free work for the community. Um, I, so, she should be starting on that right now before we get to fire season because that becomes our busy time. Um, so if you guys have any projects for the springtime that we could get like a five-man crew out, I have essentially the supervisor there right now. Um, once we hit fire crew, fire season, all that other great stuff, um, that those resources dry up pretty quick because uh, of our obligations. But we did talk about spring and fall and stuff winds down, trying to get out and help the community a little bit more and, and be, be a resource for you guys to be an asset. Appreciate that. I'm also going to push for hopefully another worker officer, which will help me out too. <laughs> so. so, this next upcoming governor election, mm -hmm. I don't think people realize how important it is. And that I know I'm not going to know can learners, but if a certain person gets in there, I'm afraid they're going to try to close the prison down again. What are you guys doing specifically to get our numbers up or whatever, our rating up? And then what can the county do to help you succeed? That's, that's actually a really good question. So as far as what we're doing, um, if you guys look on the DOC Facebook page, if you ever track that, we have, Warner Creek has been cornering the market as far as getting our name out there lately. Um, and that's <clears throat> that's obviously for a reason. We want to we want to let the state know we're here. Um, that's something that's that Warner Creek's always done great work. Um, they've always had a good foundation of security and stuff like that, but we need to tell a better story on our side. Um, as far as the county, um, you know, with like those field trips and other stuff, where we are we can help you guys by doing something in the community, that's that's what we would need from you. Um, those partnerships are crucial. It shows that we're active in the community, that we're, we're a big piece of it. Um, you know, Rotary Club's another good one. I know I've got um, Mr. Tankliff and um, Mr. Schneider to be a part of that, and we're fortunate in that, but we just need to tell a really good story. Um, I think, it, like you said, it's a can of worms and we can't tell the future. Um, I think by getting our name out there, and really represent more Creek well and show what they can do. And that's another reason why we're really trying to head on the on that transitional community unit is because <clears throat> in the department they want to see these initiatives. Well everybody's been kind of with COVID been kind of stagnant. So um, my outlook on it is if we get out there and start you know striking hard, but still being within those COVID restrictions, we still show what good work we do, even in a bad situation. And I think that's that's gonna be important for us um, to show because the staff are we're behind it. They're, you know, talking with them. Uh, the feedback's been great. They're, you know, super excited for the future. <coughs> There's going to be, there's always going to be some challenges, but I think we're able to work around those. But really, I mean, your guys' are partnership is part of the county goes to the community. That's going to be huge for us, too. I know you were working with uh, Nick Johnson and LCRI. Um, where are you guys with uh, the Renewable Energy Project? So they present, um, Mr. Hammond, they're going to present that to our leadership team in April, I believe. And that should be, because we presented before at upper levels, now this is essentially Ms. Stewart and Ms. Peters. Um, that will hopefully get us the final approval that we move ahead. We've also included it on some hot packages and stuff like that for request 
um, for the funding board as well. So there's been really positive feedback on it. Um, so hopefully here in the next month or so we get kind of that final approval we can move ahead on that. So, and that will be something that I know the other institutions are looking at. Um, but I really want to make sure we get to be a part of that first. Right. And I think it could be one of those one of those chips that we were able to play a little bit with. Yeah. When we were attempting to make sure it stayed open. Right, and with you know the geothermal power that we have too that right. puts us in a good light for everybody to like it. Yeah. So hopefully like I said, I think they're presenting on April. It was gonna be this month, but we wanted to bring in um, the people from that organization and have them be able to speak to everything. Um, because Mr. Hammond's in charge of that he's he's got a good knowledge base on it, but he's not the expert in it. So we're hopeful that by having them there, they're able to answer the questions like they did before and really kind of clear everything up where we're able to about it moving forward. Good. Right. So will that put us put the Northern Creek at a net zero on energy or not? It depends on the options because we've got a couple different options in that aspect to where we either essentially when they set up solar power for that everything would go back into the grid and then cut us a, a kickback essentially or daytime hours um, and so from the information I've got daytime hour we can either choose that option where everything kind of covers our cost during daytime but then at night we go back on the grid power so it wouldn't put us at a zero but our operating cost would be significantly lower just like it is with geothermal. <clears throat> Definitely, definitely a benefit, and definitely something else that none of the other institutions in the state, or I believe the country, can be able to say that um, for, from our research. So. so, are you considering battery backup too? So, you don't have to charge? Yeah, that's kind of what that meeting is going to cover, I think. Is if we want to store the power or if we want that power to go to the grid and we get either like I said that kickback or daytime hours we cover that cost for now um because that's kind of how I think that company operates is those are their choices um we're trying to make something to where the AICs get some experience they we're able to have that assistance from that that company as well to kind of back up their product so yeah there's a good workforce yeah, build it. <laughs> no, we we've got plenty of workers. It's just getting it, getting everything secured up. So yeah, I think they're you know like you said a third party there. So yeah, it just depends what they have to offer. Yeah, I think it'd be great if uh, all three of us make sure that we get your contact info. Yeah, we leave today. Yeah, absolutely. So. I think I got some cards on there. My security manager cards. If not, I'll get some sent out. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm obviously getting stuff updated right now. <laughs> no, I totally understand. Um, but no, I, I know we're the institution. I'm I'm excited. Um, I know everybody else is excited as well. Um, the workers, the different sections, uh, physical plant just picked up a temp hire and we're fully staffed again to too. So that's a good thing. Um, the governor's mandate affected us on that one. Um, security. Forecast. I'm hopeful within the next six months we'll be fully staffed, which is actually something we've never been able to do before. Um, and we did secure some other positions to mitigate overtime as well, so it'll be it'll be good to get those filled as well um, and really kind of drive ahead on some stuff. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, we thank you for your time. No, oh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Should we go ahead and take a. Yes, absolutely. That'd be great. And we're back in session at nine fifty-five. Yes. Um, Hi. Hey, Judy. Hi, Good. Good to see you. Good morning. How are you, Judy? Good morning. <laughs> do you? Let's see. How long do you think your presentation will take? I don't have a presentation. I just have an amendment. It's just WIC funding, so two seconds. Sounds okay. good. But I wanted to listen to what you have to say. I haven't heard of what Bailey's doing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so it doesn't right. matter to me. I'm going to stay either way. Oh, well, well, let's go ahead and do um, Bailey and go okay. ahead and start <laughs> your presentation. Okay. Thank you.
Hi guys. Um, so I'm Bailey Guido. I am an early learning support specialist for the Douglas County ESD. And um, so what am I doing in Lakeview? So <laughs> um, I represent two programs in Lake County um, through the Douglas County ESD and through the um, early learning hubs. And so being a part of that, we are part of the South Central Early Learning Hub. And the programs that we have are in Lake, Klamath, and Douglas. And the two programs are called, um, KPI is mostly what it's referred to as Kindergarten Partnership and in Innovation. And then the second program is Take Root Parenting Connection. And so I will briefly go over um, the KPI program first. And so um, really KPI is more of like behind the scenes program where we work to support early learning professionals. Um, pre, uh, yeah, pre-K all the way up to third grade is mostly who we work with. And things that um, KPI has done in the past are like partner with um, Dolly Parton Imagination Library. Um, we help support that program. And then we have also done early learning gatherings in the past. Uh, we're also doing the early learning gatherings currently with one coming up. Um, that registration for that one just opened. And um, the previous early learning gathering, I believe we had three people from Lake County attend that one. And that was right when I first got to this position. And so um, going forward, currently I have about seven people from Lake County signed up to go to that early learning um, gathering. And we're going to learn about um, self-regulation for all, um, for those early learning professionals at that gathering. And we will touch on conscious discipline, uh, which leads me to another training we have going on for early learning professionals right now, and that is the conscious discipline training. And I have a 7% participation, no, I'm sorry, that went up, 9% participation from Lake County. And that is not just centralized to Lakeview. Um, I have, I believe, four um, professional educational professionals from North Lake, uh, and, and then the rest of them are in Lakeview. And I have had lots of contact um, with professionals out in Adel and Flush, and a little bit of contact in Paisley. So I'm really just reaching out and building those relationships to get them um, to do this free. Um, professional development and we KPI really strives to create this language across the board and so people working with children in the same communities have that same language and those same skills that they can all build upon for um, kids of our community uh, and then as far as um, take root parenting connection that program that is more of a parenting education program. We provide multiple engagement opportunities for families and parents, non-traditional families as well, um, to just engage with their children and, and strive, strive to be better all the way around when it comes to being involved in their children's lives and helping them grow up. And, it's a really wonderful program. It has been available to Lake County for several years, and everything we do is also free. And um, the problem that has Lake County has had in the past with being aware of this program is that when it first um, got off to a start, everybody was centralized in Douglas County, and then um, somebody was hired in Lake County two years ago, and they were in the position for one year. And building relationships takes a longer time than just a year sometimes. And then COVID hit, that person left this position. And with COVID, nobody was doing anything in person. So they left the position, just closed, and then they reopened it. And here I am. And I've been in this position since October. And things that Take Root is um, currently doing is babies don't come with instructions. And that is a two-part workshop where the first workshop on February 23rd is going to focus on um, mothers. And then the second workshop on March 2nd is going to focus on fathers. And it's all virtual and free. 
And then we have one coming up called, it's a three-part workshop, Teaching Your Child to Talk. And that is going to be um, taught by a speech and language pathologist, and it is also Zoom. And uh, one we, a series we have going currently is Make Parenting a Pleasure, and that's a 10-week series. And uh, I, wanna, I believe we have seven people registered for that class. No Lake County participants at this time in that one. Um, but for babies don't come with instructions, that's coming up really soon. And I know that we do have three people from Lake County signed up for that workshop. So what I'm doing is working, um, building those relationships and getting the, work, uh, the word out there. And I did bring for you guys today some um, Take Root brochures that tells about our program, my business cards. And then this is the KPI brochure, and I do have it in English and Spanish. And on the back, it lists all of the um, early learning resources in Lake County, the schools, and then um, the preschools. And that's kind of the overall. And then as far as relationship building, what I've personally been doing, I have been building a relationship with public health. I've been working with WIC, the WIC program more specifically, which they're really excited to uh, start that relationship and they're joining our uh, committee um, that we have and then we I have I went to the food share committee last week or two weeks ago and they would really love to work with me on building a workshop which is something that I do um, if the interests are there to do it so I joined a work group with them, and we're hoping to get something um, started here in Lake County in person um, that will teach how to budget and how to cook healthy meals for families. And so the food chair would like to build that with me and hoping to get that done. Um, I did brainstorm at the early learning, I always forget the name, I'm sorry. It's the, we call it the PAC meeting um, with my, the yeah, hub, yes, yes, there we go, the hub meet, the, the Lake County hub meeting. We did brainstorm topics there about what community needs are for Lake County and what they would like to see take through giving classes on. Um, things that have come up are like minimal biting. Um, let's teach your children not to bite, <laughs> um, which I love. Uh, uh, picky eaters and then um, sign language. And so uh, now that I have that list, I'm taking it to my newly hired, well, I have one fully hired um, and one in the process, Lake County facilitators for Take Root. And um, one is a Head Start teacher and one is a Lake County School District teacher. So I'm really excited to get them um, hired on. And they, we're gonna take those lists to them and we're gonna see where, where they wanna touch bases um, and what they wanna maybe teach and get them going on getting workshops. And I think that uh, this program is really gonna take off when people are seeing Lake County people teaching these classes here in Lake County. <laughs> so, um, because the biggest confusion is, is the fact that I do work for Douglas County ESD. Um, but it's work, I know that relationship building and getting and word of mouth is working because I'm getting participation now from Lake County. Well, there's been that, you know, that confusion for a long time just because it's really stemmed out of Douglas County for yes. the most part. I mean, but that's, it's been there. I think the biggest part for you is the relationship building because the change in people. Yes, definitely. So, but welcome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to be here. Um, and but you're from Lake County. I am, yeah. I mean, not originally, but basically I've lived here my whole life. Um, let's see, I want to say I've been here almost 20 years now. So this is, and I originally lived in Silver Lake, and then I moved to Adel, and then I was in Lakeview, so this is definitely my home, um, which is another great piece to me being in this position, and, um, building those relationships, especially with reaching all the way out to Adel and um, Plush and then Paisley and North Lake. Uh, we definitely don't want to just make sure this program is not centralized to Lakeview. It is a Lake County program. So, 
Yeah, and uh, like I mentioned, I did hire um, two new facilitators, and that is something we do, um, is find either subject-based experts, and which I would love to find someone who is bilingual <coughs> um, to hire on as a facilitator uh, to teach these classes, because that is a need in our county. And then um, we do hire people on, and we also train them. We have a training coming up that one of my facilitators I hired is going to do, and I'm also going to be trained in it, and it is active um, parenting for step families. And then we have another training for the Make Parenting a Pleasure, and I am hoping to get one of my Lake County facilitators trained in that, um, because it is a 10-week series, and there's lots of good information there. And then I'm also trying to build a relationship with DHS so that they can give referrals and I've also worked with um, Michelle Totten at Self-Sufficiency to give her, uh, referrals or recommendations to our program. And this, and the early learning gathering, this is the one on the February 22nd. Yeah, yes, February yes it is. Sorry that I have two trainings that day. Right, okay. Yes. But yes, it is February 22nd, and um, that is for the early learning professionals. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's here in Lake County. It it is via Zoom. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes, but it is open to all three counties. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're hoping to be back in person officially in the fall because I am Douglas County employee. I have to follow Douglas County protocols, which is a discussion I'm trying to have with everybody that's involved <laughs> um, that I possibly can a big discussion. bend it yeah. ear like I'm not in Douglas County can we talk Lake County <laughs> and um, try to get more in in-person events scheduled gotcha. could you just explain a little bit about the uh, three counties uh, so it's Lake Klamath and Douglas County which yes. is kind of an odd threesome Yes. So from my understanding, um, back when it was, uh, you know, beginning, back to the very beginning, is that Clam, or when the state of Oregon said we are going to distribute all the counties and put them in early learning hubs and group them together, Klamath County wanted to have its own, and it would include Lake because we do that with lots of other programs and stuff. Um, and, and basically, Oregon said, no, we're not giving any specific county their own hub, their early learning hub. And so this is how we're gonna group you. We're call, gonna call you the South Central Early Learning Hub. And, and, and Lake County is kind of way off the trail from Douglas County, and that's where the disconnect is. And, and there is no really rhyme or reason why they grouped us with Douglas, except for the fact that they weren't going to individualize counties. And, um, but, I mean, the, the way they did it, um, I think it, it has potential to work in just a significant way here in Lake County as it does in Douglas County, because obviously they do have more participation um, from Douglas County, these programs do because that's where they're centralized. But having me boots on the ground here, I, I really do have lots of hope that we can bring up participation for Lake County. Um, and as of this year, the early there is an early learning hub for every county now in Oregon. I know School District 7 uh, just recently accepted or got accepted or what, 11 positions or, or 11 slots or something like that? Yes, yeah, so. yes. Yeah, yeah it's, um, I think it's, it's really great that, that these, these programs are available because they're offered for free and we have lots of amazing information um, to, to distribute in the county and to build that overall language and so, you know, if we have people moving from Lake County or people moving out of um, out of Lake County, they have, for early learning professionals, they have all these professionals that have been trained 
in the same areas and they have the same language to use for these children, which provides more stability and more understanding. And so uh, that's one of my top goals is to, is to for KPI, the KPI program, is to get the educators involved. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. As far as the KPI, mm -hmm. why, why is it called KPI when it's actually Kindergarten Readiness and Preparedness Initiative? Yeah, so there's there's confusion on the name. And, and it's always confused me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I, so so the, the disconnect there is that KPI tries to fund programs to get them up and running and then <coughs> hands them off. They're not for the long term or the, you know, the long haul. Um, and so you have the let's get ready for K programs and the, and the let's get ready for kindergarten um, brochures. And that is a big hype. And um, it was a really big program here in Lake County for a little while. And we're on Zoom now, so it, it's just hard to bring attention to it. Everything's on Zoom. <laughs> um, but the let's get ready for kindergarten and the let, let's get ready for K program is not a an official KPI program. It is uh, it was in like years ago. And now it's something that they have partnered with other partners to fund and help get up and running. And so right now Take Root um, is taking that on. And KPI is helping to support them get it up and running, and maybe they'll need more support next year. And so KPI will also help fund that if we feel they need the, the support. And so this is me talking as a KPI representative and not a Take Root because they are separate. And and then and Take Root gets that up and running, and now it's their program. And in Klamath County. Um, the school district has bought into the Let's Get Ready for K program. And, no, I'm sorry, not Clark, Douglas County. Douglas County. Yes, so Douglas County school districts have gotten that support from the KPI to get that up and running, and now it's fully funded by the Douglas County school district. And But because Take, take Root is all three counties, that when we offer it, we do also offer it to all three. And so I hope that well, helps clear it up. I guess, you know, it, it, it always confused me when, when we said KPI, uh, we'd always leave the R off of the actual abbreviation. That mm -hmm. was, it's a trivial question, I understand. I yeah. just, it's, we leave readiness out, yet we always put readiness on all the emails. And so, so I actually, it took me a whole year to figure out that KPI and kindergarten readiness were the same thing. Yeah, so. and, and it, it is, but it isn't. So we're trying to kind of make sure that the programs that in the past that have done ready for K stuff, that they're going to take that over. Yeah, and that KPI over. is going to move on to something else. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's it. Yes. Uh, I, have, I have no other questions. Okay. Thank, you. thank you very much. Yes. Thank you guys so much. And I'll just hand these up. <laughs> that over that's all that I see that was changed on there is we have October through June WIC funding an increase for our program. Is that October this year, 2022, so. mm -hmm. all the way through June of 2023? Uh, award period July through June 30th is what the top says. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So October 21. Through June of 2022. Okay, so it's a list June. And these funds need to be spent by June, yes. Okay, gotcha. WIC program going good? Our WIC program's going well. We're struggling because of staffing 
uh, we should have six staff to do WIC, and we have four staff in our building, and we're certainly only one is doing WIC. And Emily George is doing well WIC um, and North Lake, but Lily's leaving. So, um, yeah, we are working with the WIC program to see how we can still qualify to get it with the limited staff. But yes, the program itself is going well. We have um, our numbers, I don't know the exact numbers, but Ariana says they're starting to pick up. They went down during the two years of COVID. I think we were the only um, public health that stayed open for WIC clients. Everybody else did um, calls to do over the phone, but we, we kept our doors open and saw WIC. That's why we didn't do testing. COVID testing is because we kept seeing clients in our building. Um, but I think what's going to happen is I'm going to take a training um, and then we hired a part-time person who's coming on February 20th. Um, she'll help in the front office. She'll help with billing. Uh, we're job sharing her with long-term care. Um, so she'll work four hours for us, four hours for long-term care. And we can train her to do the front office part of checking in and verifying and it's all a check and balance. Um, Ariana could do it all, but for um, non-fraudulent, they have to have multiple people that, that make sure that the, accountability. Yeah, yeah. So I'll start taking some training. I think it takes quite a while. I'll start getting some training done, and then the new person will get some training done, and then we'll just go from there. Was Hannah doing any of the WIC stuff, or was it just Ariana? Hannah was starting training to do the WIC stuff, but didn't she? She didn't finish it. Uh, Ariana is the WIC coordinator, but she's going to take a more advanced class so that she could be our breastfeeding coordinator, also, which is what Jill Hardland used to do, which was what Hannah was starting to do. Um, so Ariana will end up having three of those positions, and then we'll have the front office staff doing one, and I'll do the training. So I supervise Ariana, and and then I think we will be able to continue for now. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, not much is new and exciting. We have the eye health tests in. I gave some to the school. Um, we gave out. Last week, we gave out 180. Yesterday, I gave some out. I was going to give out 180, and I think I only gave out 90 in the drive through And we have one more um, drive through that we'll hand them out. Next Monday, we were able to get in the newspaper. So maybe we'll get a few more people. I think I have a total of 1,500 that I will receive. But we can also use those um, for long-term care with their outbreak. Um, we can share that with them if we need to. And they're good until July. So I want to make sure we continue giving them out to people. I don't think that they're legal for travel. Um, like if the airline is requiring it, they won't work for that. But um, people can sure have them in their house to use them if they want to. Sounds good. Any other questions? I haven't seen you guys in a while. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for me? I can so. We did get, I think we're posting a position for North Lake for a nurse. And we have another position posted for us here. Okay. Um, and I'm not fussed. Uh, I posted for part time or full time. Um, so I take either one. And then we did go down to four days a week. Last week was our first week we started. We're closed on Fridays. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah. a, that's a change. That's a change. And it is, gonna, it is certainly going to help <clears throat> with my staff. Um, and you know Miranda's part time, and wants to stay part time. So she works three to four days a week. So this, between the two of us right now, we can at least keep up with the nursing portion. Right. right. Yeah. And have and and still have that consistency. Yeah. And everything for yeah. both you well, guys. Well, we and were the finding that we would once in a while be by ourselves. You know, we didn't have enough staff to cover, and you'd be by yourself in there. And I just don't feel like that's not right. Yeah. No. Yeah, so we just decided to to fix that would be going to four days a week. Um, Brenda is full time, so she's working four tens. Um, and Ariana is not back to full time yet because of uh, daycare issues. Um, but we'll work around that. And they're both taking the um, the Spanish interpreter class, so they have a lot of homework and work to do that they can 
do this on that Friday too. They can come in and just keep the door locked and work on that. Right. Yeah. Right. That's perfect. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's about it. Thank you, Judy. Nice to see you guys. And if you need, then give me all her. Always a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you lost your other person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a great day. All right. See ya. So was Jason going to get come in and talk about either one of the ordinances or, you know? Yeah. Um, I recommend it. Did, did Dave Jason talk to either of you guys about Ordinance 116? He talked to me last week about it. I thought that this was already an ordinance, but. Yeah. So what are we doing? So he. Oh, he made some changes. Did he actually highlight those? No, they're, they're not highlighted. Um, was one of the things I kind of talked to him about was it'd be nice to know kind of what we did, what we're changing, what we're altering. Um, mainly what he says that he worked on was the uh, um, the process as it goes kind of through the courts and everything, kind of getting back into alignment with some of the other methods that we've, we've talked about and using. Uh, the other thing is that he took out some of the uh, language around uh, eyesore, um, visual, um, not visual impairment, but uh, as far as the visual effects and such around actual nuisances. So he took some of that language out. So why do you take those? Because they don't really have any backing in the ORS, and there's no real teeth behind any of those. Um, it's language that we put in as a local jurisdiction, but really, you it, you want to keep you you want to keep it centered around health and safety, um, you know, and actual physical effects. Um, you know how your land is actually affecting another, or habits on your land are affecting another, or how it's just simply not legal. Um, we're presenting fire life safety issues and kind of centering it around that. Um, we obviously don't have any uh, public here today with concerns on it. The actual hearings, though, are till tomorrow. Is that correct? Well, tomorrow is the last day for Ordinance 39, correct? Mm -hmm. The 39 and the camping ordinance, mm -hmm. yes, but it's the first day for the 116. Right. Camping hasn't changed. Um, since so um, let's, our first what do you guys meetings. think? Let's make sure Jason's here tomorrow when we open this up, and then we can. I don't. Yeah, questions. I I don't want to do anything injustice, you know, and go over going over our conversation. I was comfortable with the changes. Um, I can tell you that based on you know the my final thoughts on it after I had my discussion with Jason, but uh, I don't I don't want to be going down through those one by one because, like I said, it, they weren't highlighted in red. As far as what changes were actually made and how this actually differs from the previous one. It was just, you know, points that we kind of pulled out and discussed. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to your Korea membership, James. Oh, Commissioner. Um, well, so um, I attend the Korea meetings, have since Judge Farrar and um, Gillum County told me that I needed to attend them. I didn't even know what it was. So I started attending them, and there were some very interesting conversations being had. Can uh, you tell us what CREA stands for? Uh, community. Right, right there. Sorry. Community Renewables Energy Association. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to make sure I had those acronyms right. But yeah, Community Renewables Energy Association. And basically, it's a table mainly for counties to sit down and talk about energy topics. Not necessarily always renewable energy because we also have the utilities at the table, uh, utility companies. 
We have Bonneville Power and others that, um, that talk to us about capacity, uh, what the capacity needs are. So it's not necessarily always focused around renewable energy, but the renewable energy developers over the past, I'd say probably five years is what I'm understanding. Um, they were kind of at the table when I first showed up in 2019. They have always been present. Um, and uh, largely the solar developers. And so it's a, it's a good round table to hear what they're thinking and what they're working on and what their goals are and what their issues are and what their problems are. And we can have that discussion, but the table is technically for local governing jurisdictions and counties. Um, cities sometimes jump into the meetings because you know, there's been a couple cities that have tried to go for like solar on rooftop programs <clears throat> so they'll they'll come in and they'll they'll want to talk about what they're dealing with i've never been hindered from having from being present at the table however lake county has historically not ever paid dues either and i don't take votes on that board um they, they like to hear from the counties. They like to hear from Lake County, uh, specifically because of all the things going on with renewable energy in our county. Um, but uh, so Mike McCarter sent this. Mark, Mike McCarter is the former director of AOC and currently the director of Korea. And he sent this invoice to us and Melanie let me know about it. I didn't know that they were going to send us an invoice I thought more of what we were going to talk about is potential membership um, at some point. I wasn't sure when Mike McCarthy would get that to us. So he sent us dues um, if we choose to pay them and enter membership with Korea. Uh, was it Korea the ones that brought our attention to the solar companies wanting to reduce the scale yes they want yes one. Korea was the one and actually that was a specific phone call from Mike MacArthur who saw it and he wanted to bring both myself and Derek DeGroote into the fold and make sure that we knew what was happening um, I think being working with them is invaluable if we don't pay dues my heart is not broken one way or the other because I believe that I'm still going to be attending those meetings. I'm still going to be participating. I might not have a vote all the time. The only argument, if I could go back over to, you know, like make, not necessarily a devil's advocate, but play the other side of the table here. The only argument I could really see for us paying dues is because over the past maybe four to five years, Korea has become very developer driven. That is uh, a direct complaint from at least three different commissioners who I attend those meetings with. And the danger in that is that the, the developers already have associations where they can sit down and talk if they're not suing each other in the process. Um, you know, they have OSEA, they have other, other eight associations, they can go and talk and everything else. Korea is mainly centered around global governance and uh, it's a table for the counties because we don't really have a committee for this at AOC and it's it's difficult with AOC because it's so broad you get all the power companies in play and there's a lot going on right now with mandates and laws that are coming down from the governor's office and from the state onto these developers onto the utility companies and everyone's getting a little they're wearing a little raw because of these requirements that are being not only just pushed on them, but ultimately it gets pushed down to us. And it creates just, you know, friction in our own communities because of these mandates around, you know, the Bill 2021, which passed. It's done. It passed. And what they're saying is that we have to get to 80% renewable energy in Oregon by 2030. And by 2035, we have to be at 90%, and by 2040, we have to be at 100% renewable energy. So these power companies are running rampant trying to figure out how to make this work, and they're pushing all that pressure over onto developers, and developers are pushing all that pressure maybe 
unintentionally, but definitely it's happening, onto communities looking to develop projects to try and meet these goals that the state has put, put on the state. So Korea is going to be the place for these conversations to be take to take place. It has been and will continue to be so. The only argument I can see for us being involved with them as far as an actual due paying count, some counties do, most counties don't. The only argument I can see is that it, it makes us one of the counties that have buy-in. So that we have a little bit more weight at the table when the developers show up, whether it be New Sun Energy or others. Well, this is, like I've told you before, this has happened to us before with the Natural Resources Committee on AOC. We could be on the committee, but we couldn't vote. And if you remember two or, th two or three years ago, the vote at the Natural Resources Committee was decided by one vote. And legislative, I think, actually, was decided in legislative already by one vote. And we couldn't vote as a county because we didn't pay that due. And so it cost us a major decision. And, you know, me just thinking out loud is, is that sometimes paying for your vote is worth it because of some of the decisions that are made. Um, because you can, you can talk till you're blue in the face, but if you don't have any voting capacity, it can go either way a lot of times. But. I think with the demands of uh, renewable energy being uh, pushed upon us, you know, by 2040, what Commissioner Williams just recommended or said that it's coming down, which we know that. But, uh, this is something that is now pretty important, and I think Lake County, we you know, look at ourselves as a renewable energy county in the past, and uh, we need to be at the forefront of this. We want to have a say, and like you said, we want to have a say in what, what our future looks like. So uh, I would support the membership this time. Do you want to go ahead and make a motion and put it to me? You want to do it, Commissioner Williams? Uh, I will go ahead. That's fine. Okay, I'll make a motion to uh, pay dues for Community Renewable Energy Association in the amount of $2,500 for this fiscal year. Second that motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I don't know if it's for fiscal year, but for 2022, right? Yeah. I believe it's just, yeah, it goes to carry through 2021, 2022. For calendar year? Yeah, calendar year. I believe. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Moving on to the AOC. AOC duties. Just real quick, Chair, if I could, you guys did receive an email that I had sent to you with some updates from the last CREA meeting. Yes. You received that and you, you got that as well. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Appreciate it. Well, it's good to have those because it kind of keeps us informed of what's going on in that field. The Bonneville Power one was a good PowerPoint. Too. It was, yeah, that was very informative. And we talked on that probably for about 45 minutes or so. We had a gal this presentation. Okay. Sorry. So we're talking about the Association of Oregon Counties, AOC membership dues. Um, there has been an increase in membership due. You know, we use this CIS alone, which is the city county insurance legal stuff. I'll bet you money if we kept track of every bit of it, we spend a lot more than what our dues hold, just in that field alone. And so I have no problem with it, but if you guys want to have further discussion. 
last year's dues were close, right around fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. So they're up fourteen hundred bucks. But we're getting the natural resources. They've taken that out. Yeah, well, so we we we're excluded from the Council of Forest Trust Land Counties. We don't attend those meetings and because we don't have trust land. We also. But I'm talking about our natural resources. We used to have to pay four thousand dollars. Correct. And federal land this. management committee is the four thousand six hundred forty. Right. They're not giving us an option. I guess, which is fine. It's once again that we're paying for a vote until. That support this. We have we have to because it's already been this before. So <clears throat> and if you want, we can wait on that tomorrow. I, I do think just a quick just a point. I do think that it is still optional. Oh, it is. I but zero if we apply zero dollars, that would indicate the membership is not applicable. So I, 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 yeah, I, I do think that it is still optional. We could get out of it if we want it. Okay, I, I, I know, I understand it. I, yeah, I, um, I didn't but I, the small group. because we've had this discussion at AOC many, many times before. Um, because when you and I first came on in 2019, we, that's not what we were going to pay for. But um, it's bit us a couple times. So, I, I understand just. I think AOC is wanting to be mindful that yes, it's still voluntary, but it'd probably be better for you if you jumped in. Yeah, could we hire our own lobbyists on natural resources for four thousand? For four thousand bucks? No. So I think the uh, descriptor on the next page is pretty good. It said the federal land management subcommittee dues are directed to advocacy on federal land management issues. Funds allow AOC to coordinate with other national efforts, obtain professional services, and conduct communication campaigns on federal legislation. Dues are based on the county share of the latest annual national forest receipt payments or successor safety net payments. So. Um, just while we're on this topic, um, Chair, you wanted to wait till tomorrow to move on, act on this. It doesn't matter. Okay. Whatever you guys want. Um, I do. So I, I recently got appointed as co-chair on budget and finance at AOC. And AOC is seeing a cost going up. And I don't know if you got a chance to see their budget um, portfolio from the last AOC meeting. You saw that 5% increase and another 5% increase and it's looking to be between 10 to 14 percent increase in cost because of the whether it be the cola all the other things and wages um, we're not done having this conversation yet there's been a number of things that have been suggested um, but a lot of them have are, are still are, are still going to look like dues will likely increase again so um, we're not happy. We're not done having that discussion. Uh, budget committee has informed the executive committee of what the issue is. Um, how we solve it will be either up to the executive committee or the full body to vote on later. Um, so that's been kind of where we're going with the AOC dues situation. There, there's quite a bit of money in reserves. Um, I, I believe there's over a million in reserves right now. It's like nine hundred and something thousand last year. So. Right. Well, there's there's a difference of opinion on that too because there's um, I I it, it on the books for as a budget as a member of the budget committee I will say that it's about nine hundred some odd thousand, but uh, other members of AOC and other counties believe that there's more there than AOC is letting. Than AOC is being clear on. Um, haven't necessarily found all that magic money yet, but um, there are contingencies built within the budget into other line items and other budgets. Uh, so 
maybe they're talking about those contingencies, you know, and all really being the ultimate, you know, where those dollars are coming from. But some people think that we need to pull from reserves in order to make that happen. Um, uh, I don't know the, di the difficulty from pulling from reserves to make that kind of thing happen is it's just kicking the can further down the road. Well, then that only really lasts for three years or something, correct? Right? Well, yeah, only a few. Um, but I know that on the current due structure that has not increased a lot over the past decade or more, um, there is no way that we can meet the growing increase of cost. Just can't. And we're currently short two people that we'd like to replace. Um, but we haven't yet. No, we need. Well, it'll be an AOC's attorney. Correct. Yeah. Legal counsel. Legal counsel. We'd like, uh, we'd so definitely like to replace providing them a legal counsel for free, which has been a good deal. So maybe that's where it needs to be. Could be. And I think they're working on that, right? At the legislative or at your level. <laughs> yeah, the only the only thing with that is, you know, I don't have that guy's phone number. And I had Rob Bovets. You know, I could I could get a hold of Rob and talk to him about AOC matters. Um so you know, I don't want to lose that either. There's there's a lot to it. I just want to kind of keep it on on the radar. So do you guys want to hold off until tomorrow, or do you want to make a decision on it today? We have a pretty packed day tomorrow, so if we get rid of it, I don't think it's going to be correct. It's the future. Um, let's hold off. We'll talk to you okay. Um, Miss Melanie, do you want to speak on the ransomware insurance and why we need it? So there have been a few ransomware attacks on counties recently, in the past few months. We've had five um, breaches in the past 30 days now with our personal accounts. They've been able to be contained, but we only have $60,000 of coverage with CIS, and the minimum cost to recreate our servers would be about $100,000. If we pay $500, we'll have up to $250,000 of coverage through CIS. Through the $500 how long? Additional work? Additionally, each year. So it might be worth it. Um, we can always dip into contingency if we do get hacked. We have several layers of protection. I won't go into those on the record um, for the public, just in case. But we're pretty well we're pretty well covered. Um, we have different contingencies put in place, but there's always that what if, and they keep infiltrating us, regardless of the trainings and everything. So, so Tulsa County. This the one that got hit the hardest. Yeah, they had they, 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 were, they were down for two weeks and uh, their whole county. Um, and then they had to pay. And so they 300000 or something just to be able to get their stuff back. Right. And Lynn County was hit just recently yeah, as well. well. So Lynn County is a lot. They seem to be targeting counties. So. I think 500 bucks is very cheap insurance. <laughs> well, it's in addition to whatever our current right is. Right, yeah, it's in addition. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we will pay the ransom, but just to recreate, and then it will take time if we do lose our data to recreate, because they have to wipe everything down and then build it back up from the remote backups that we have. Do you know what our current payment is? For insurance? Yes. Zero. It's included. The the fifty or sixty thousand is included. That's like the base coverage that you get. And that's CIS. included through CIS. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd be supporting that too. It's like an investment. So I think it's. Do we need a vote? 
vote on or consensus good? Consensus would be fine. So we we're all thumbs up on that. We can take care of that right away so we're not pickle. Still be for the do this department updates. Yeah, he had to testify at 10 for the grant. I think he'll be here around 11. Okay. Why don't we recess until Dave's done? Okay. I got to speak on the railroad today, too. Testimony at 1 o'clock. And what, what committee is that? Transportation. Okay. I have worked with him many years, but it's fun yeah. always. And Mr. Franz, he's going to be with us tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Will that be for an executive session? Yes. Uh, not that we know of. Okay. So we'll recess at 11 or 10 46. <clears throat> He's here. Dave's here. Well, oh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. Come on in, Dave. You guys ready? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Barry, did you get it? Well, we did get it. <laughs> Camera's rolling still, just FYI. Um, okay. You want me to <laughs> as long as I'm not live. <laughs> You are. Just found out that our engineers messed up on our airport project, but not a big deal. Oh. It's on them, not us. Found out we are getting $110,000 for the next five years from the FAA on projects for the airport. has got some competition. Oh yeah, who? It's a guy named Bill Hurd. I don't know. Back in session at ten forty-seven. Dave, you ready for me? Yep. I kind of wanted to run through what's going on in my world and in my position of all the things that I've got going on. So, uh, all you the board understands what what's going on in my world, basically. Because I know I don't update you guys all, I don't, it's hard for me to remember everything as I talk to you guys. So I just kind of wanted to briefly, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of depth, I'm just going to kind of fill you guys into what I'm working on across the county from every department I have. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, airport, just a, a brief thing there. As you know, we've got a couple things going on there. We've got a seat based project and a taxi alpha project of re repairing the taxiway. And we're, we, we put in together that seat based project and our taxi A, taxiway A project all in one. And our engineers are working with the engineers from the BLM on that seat base. And then what, what we're doing is just combine it all together while our contractor, or our construction workers, or our contractors there, they just do it all at once. So it's kind of mingle together, kind of save time, money, and uh, that. And, and I think all you guys were aware of that. As I said a minute ago, uh, the FAA 
uh, just let us know they'll be giving us 110,000 a year for project for the next five years at the airport. So not a whole lot, but it, it is a lot. To, you know, for, to help our matches, help, you know, just it just help. 110,000 a year. Yeah, for the next five years. <clears throat> You think one of those projects might be an additional fuel storage tank? No, because uh, we want that. That's not under the FAA. FAA. That's under county. That's under us. We've got to either go for a regional grant or something like that. Mm -hmm. FAA dollars will not cover that. But that has to be FAA approved. It has to be FAA approved, but they won't give us dollars to, because we already have an FAA approved fuel tank. It's up to us if we want to enhance it or not. They're not, you know, operation. Has Tom got us a price on what that would cost? He hasn't. He hasn't put nothing in front of me yet. So, so that's kind of with, with the. Uh, oh, and then we uh, we got uh, we already got approved for three point seven million dollars for our next project to the FAA, three point seven, for our taxiway B project, and that's already been approved, and that's huge because. When we first approached it, they turned us down. Well, how it, after they found out that that was a, used as an extra run, runway for fire and all that and for emergency service, if our main, if our main uh, land uh, runway, runway thank you, goes out, that's an alternative for emergency. So right. they reevaluated them. Oh, yeah. And so they approved the $3.7 million on that. Is that over? Is that basically all in one sum, or is that over like two year period? What is no, that? that'd be, that'd be a, that's the next on our on our uh, scope of work or for our master plan. Our next project is taxiway B. Gotcha. We're going to try to figure out how to get the dollars. Well, they figured it out for us. So once we're done with taxi, A, we go right into the uh, scope of work on taxiway B and start on it. Start doing the pre 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 pre, pre, pre yeah construction. So, you know, as a federal agency, they've been really good to work with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I have had no issues with them. And they've they really them. helped us with our report. And they really work with us. You know, they, they, uh, Tom knows quite a bit about airport. Like with me, they're very, they explain it to me real well and make me understand it in, in my, in my level, not their level. But I can't understand their level. But they can understand <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a real positive thing that the airport has, as always. I mean, it's, we had a lot of support with the Connect. You know, we didn't put in for any airport Connect, but it was a waste of our time if we was to put in for Connect Oregon this year because we got fully funded. So, well, you know, it didn't waste of our time. Not a waste of our time, but we didn't need it. We don't we'll save it for another time. Because on other projects, you know, we, we want to do that uh, extension of the runway. That's kind of a big deal. Well, when we go to do that and connect still available, that's when we're doing for connect dollars to match our federal uh, dollars. So. so good news there. Railroad, you know, you, you, uh, you guys have been kind of involved with that. We've got the connect grant that we're working with. We've got a Caltran grant that we got. We got we're still working with that. Uh, David Anzer from the Goose Lake Rail, he's working on that. And then, the, of course, the Christie grant that we've all been working on for a lot of years. So, you know, for to do the ties and the ballast rock and new rail and all that. And that's what we're working on now. We've been getting in. To, our next shipment is actually rail. Rail's going to be coming in. So, uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, any questions on the railroad? So, the Caltrans grant we already got, right? Mm -hmm. we'll, We've got the funding available. That's about four hundred and eighty five thousand if I remember right. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Pretty, Pretty close, close yeah. I think. And then the the Christie grant, of course, we've all been working on. That was for the bridge approaches and the bridges. And then this Connect Oregon grant is No, the, the Christie grant the Christie grant yes, or the ties and the ballast and the rail and some bridge approaches. We already did the bridges with the uh, regional solution dollars back four years ago, three, four. And then the 
connect Oregon ones are for actually the rail on the bridge. It's a, it's a yeah it's, it's a, a section of the our rail that we're putting in to, to replace the rail. Yes, right. So we can use that as match dollars. Right, and then that's the one that we're testifying today. Today, yeah, we're going to okay. in two twenty today. We got to do a presentation. Presentation. Presentation today to see if we can get it. What was the Prissy brand again? How much was it just for our public's? Well, the, the, the actual dollars is 5.2, 5.79, something like 5.7. Yeah, the total good. project's 10 million, right? And Brett Brinsky is still working on the color of the money to on our contribution. But we got, you know, we we got approved for that loan. We don't want to use that loan if all possible. And that's why we're trying to get these other grants and these other things going. Then the loan will be our fallback to if we don't get it. And then we'll have, you know, we're there. We just want to find different ways. Any more? Any questions on the railroad? Okay, landfill. As you guys know, uh, we're working in the red at the landfill right now. Uh, it, we've come quite a ways, but it's still a work in progress, which it always will be. It's the landfill. Uh, I'm working on, at the fairgrounds, we have all these chips, and we need to get rid of them. I'm working on using the chips at the landfill for uh, daily cover, not Temporary cover, but for daily cover, we are putting C and D into our landfill now. Why can't we put chips in there? It's no different than putting a load of wood, a load of chips that someone brings from the public in there. So it's just used for lady. Uh, it's a daily cover or weekly cover. What I mean by for if we do a like if we set if we quit using our working face for three months, you got to have dirt over it. You can't use chips to use it. But if you're if you're going to be not using it for a couple of weeks, wood chips can use it or cover. It helps for vector control and all that. So I'm looking into that with the EQ. Uh, and that's kind of, and then this basic operation out there, it's still a, a battle, but we're, we're, we're getting through it and we're making it. We're, we're adjusting as we go. Uh, and then uh, cell side, my cells. My cell sites, I call them. Uh, T Nat is interested in our carbon carbon view. Wait, let's let's stay on that too. Oh, okay, sorry. So we raised the rate for zero sorry, to, zero to one hundred forty pounds. How's yeah. that going? Yeah, how's that going? Going real well. We made uh, for an example with with moving the rates. On this is just Sunday alone. Last Sunday, I, I did the figures here. Uh, we made eighty nine dollars more than we would have. Out. And that's just the minimum. You know what I mean? That's how much we made was eighty nine dollars more for that day. For that day. <clears throat> and that, and I just did an average of all the five dollars that we did. We did forty one five dollars on Friday or Sunday, and that's what we made by lowering the prices. We had some people drive off. Well, I'm not paying that. We tell them that you know we raised them, we raised the minimum, and then they said, "I ain't paying nothing to build off." We thought about six or seven do that. I think it'd be better to say that we implemented minimum. We didn't have a minimum before, did we? No. Yeah. 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 So putting that minimum in place, I mean, like obviously people have the right to drive away, but you know, we've had some email exchanges and. So forth, and been speaking with some of the people that have come had issue with that. I think ultimately, you know, I mean, bringing in a larger quantity of garbage when you come to the landfill is more appropriate for everyone, and, and saves you money ultimately. It saves yeah. us money if you think about it. it saves them money. They can well, that's play. what I mean. Yeah, saves they them. Complain, you know, the people that didn't like they complain if they come out every week. Well, they don't count people. The six dollars in gas that they had to come out to dump from. So it's actually a savings to them if they think about it. Right. If they only come once a month, 
they'd say 20 bucks in gas. So whatever, we'll make sure we the gas mileage. So Dave, you gave me an example where uh, people are trying to maximize that 104 panels. Uh, so they're bringing more garbage to still stay within that $5 range. Um, so you're actually seeing an increase in garbage from some people uh, trying to maximize that. Not value. really increase, but at one time, yes. In the at long run, it's the same because you, and, and probably not yet, but uh, right now we had some people pull up and go, uh, want to know the weights because they wanted to see if they made their $5 all the way, 40 pounds short, and you go, oh, good, so I'll get another can. And I'll get it where it's my five dollars or, or more. Did they drive away and come back? Oh no, no, they oh, went for, for, for next gotcha. time. They, gotcha. They're just doing the math with what they kind of visualize and they put right. my pickup of what five dollars totally. And we've yeah. had a lot of that, and they, and they were cool about it. They were nice about it, and just said, okay, we well, we need about forty more pounds or sixty more pounds or ten more pounds. So they kind of get an idea of what they want, right? And that, you know, the, they can visualize. So when they come to the dump. They know for the landfill. They know how much you know close to it. And so our prices above 140 pounds did not change. No, right. no. That's, that's where a lot of people complain. Complain. You know, people bring in the the pickup loads. Well, they were getting making ten dollars already anyway. Their loads they, they didn't change. They just say they over under 140 pounds. They did change. What we got to remember to talk about too is every vehicle that goes out to the landfill from the public is a liability to the county. And so the less people we get going out there, the more it saves us on chances of liability. And there have been a lot. Of, I mean, we've had almost a car accident, we've almost had people run over because those one baggers, when it's busy, they don't want to wait, so they'll grab their garbage and run through the traffic. Well, they run in there and a car comes out and that's slam on their brake because they're trying to get to the pits with their one bag. Yeah, seen that several times. And we're like, no, don't get out of your rig until you get backed up in there. I don't have time to wait. Well, you know, and this helps with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we're not trying to discourage people from not coming. Right, no. It's frequency. Right. And, and the minimum, I think, helps that have solve that problem to a great extent. What's the minimum at Paisley and Christmas Valley at the transfer sites? Well, it's uh, $2 a can. So you can't you, you can't implement, because you don't weigh it, how would you ever charge someone $5 or, or even more for that? So the transfer site in, the, in, the, uh, in Paisley, and they're, 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 they're money makers. They, you make money on those if you, just, if you wanted to go by pounds. Because most people come in with cans, you know, those who come in three or four cans, it's usually like six dollars because it's a uh, six cans. You don't go by the weight at all, you go by the can. If they, someone brings a bag in, it's two dollars at the transfer size, they don't go by scale. So, how do you, yeah. that's where you, right. how do you charge five dollars for a bag there? It's so, it's there. actually pretty darn similar, yeah, yeah. Same thing in Christmas Valley. Same and, thing Christmas Valley. Same thing in uh, Red uh, Fort so, Rock. Silver Lake. Silver Lake. Right. You charge by the cans. You know, if we bring one bag and it's two dollars. Okay. So, you know, one bag before was seventy cents. And that's why I try to tell everybody to transfer the Christmas Valley and all those. You're already there to what we're charging now. Matter of fact, if someone brings in a whole truckload, it's fifteen dollars a load. Or no, it's twenty seven dollars for a full trailer. So it might only weigh five hundred pounds in there. You're making you're making money. Or not making money, but it pretty balances out. How's it going with compliance on tarping? On the on your bringing your load out to the dump. Well, right now it's a warning. It's a warning. Well, I told the guys, I said, people that come in, if they come in, give them a warning. I, then they know, give them that thing, and then after. Uh, Come March first, normal warnings. It's going to be implemented. I thought that was a fair thing to do. It's not a good idea. I know when people on Rabbit Hill and Roberta and Thomas Creek Road will be blasting people. Well, yeah, they're you know they're tired of their road home with like a garbage bag. You know, 
And like, and like I told you, I go, we're not doing it to make that. We're raising up for those prices and to make money. It's to make people talk to their lovers. Because you know? you're not going to make no money. It's not, you know, you only get three or four of those every three months that even does that. Most of the people did talk. Yeah, but it's the people that did come in and said, well, I'll just pay the five bucks. James or Jamie or they, they say five dollars. Or you, you know it's five dollars. Yeah, I don't care. Every time. I don't care. I'll pay the five bucks. So right there, it's probably they don't care that they're there. Twenty dollars a pop, they're going to care. Yeah. I mean, I would anyway. And they don't necessarily have to tarp. If they have cans, they can bring them oh, yeah. with their lids. As long as it's enclosed and as long as the lids are on. If you, you know, that's where it's at. I mean, you can have the can, you don't have to tarp. And I think, too, Dave, like I talked to you about this weekend, I think we need to advertise in the newspaper just reminding people of what's going on out there so they're not surprised when they come across. Sure. All right, thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry, you guys get hurt sometimes. Just want to get out of here. No. <laughs> okay, so cell towers or my cell sites. Uh, like I said, Team TNET is interested in causing people to put their internet service out there, which is just sitting there vacant right now. Every year, well, every four years, BLM's going, Are you ever going to use this? Are you going to get rid of the contract? Because they want to get, if it's not being used, they want to get uh, Surprise Valley off there. But we need that power there if we're going to use it. Well, this year, uh, I think I put a, a, a proposal on your guys' desk from BLM to Chicago and Beaver. Right? And so we're working on that as as a progressive. I'll inform you guys. And, and once we go into a lease, then we'll kind of get it approved. So uh, we, we renewed uh, Fish Creek Rim, we renewed Dead Indian cell sites. We've got some cell sites on Black Cap that, we, that I'm working on negotiating new contracts, new agreements. I did have American Tower come in. They wanted to give us a one time offer. Well, they did about four years ago, and then they wanted to do another one, pay us out. But we're already in a, in a contract of so many dollars per year, and we gain so much every year from the cell, cell tower site. And they want to change it again. She hasn't called me back yet, but I don't know if I'm 100% interested in what they're offering. And I can get that offer to you guys and see what you guys think. But it's really going to be more of a pain in the butt for us than it is to help us, I, I feel, because we, we got a good deal now. So, but I'll, I'll, I can get the stuff put in front of you. Yeah. Until we get broadband figured out, we need to take a good look at that and at least have that placeholder. <laughs> What's the uh, status of now? You, you said that they renewed. We renewed the one on Dead Indian. Um, would did our footprint of land increase at all, or is it just complete straight up renewal? It's just straight up renewal. It's at every automatic renewal every five years. We just automatically go in that back. Did they discuss anything with you about the potential for increasing that footprint of land up there? Not, not on our end of the deal. Not, not we just have a building up there. Right. But no, they wouldn't. I mean, unless we we don't we have it. Requested. Well, I have requested it. I requested it two years ago, but um, yeah, there was no movement on it. So, yeah, no, I didn't hear nothing. Because we got a building up there that sits empty. Right. I think it's in it. ZX and Rob Thornton has some stuff. In there. Right. Right. So, because all of our cell cell stuff that we need is on the uh, American or uh, U.S. or. Uh, Sell your one tower, there's Verizon tower. So, Dave, with the towers, some of the the power going out on the black cap, like the radio station was off for two weeks, and they asked about maybe a, a generator. Would that help? County resource or county well, the way I look at those, those up there, uh, if the power's out, that's that's on them because. We don't charge the radio people to use our building up there. We we don't make no money in our our our, our uh, the one that we lease to the radios. Or it's just a they get to use it and they have their stuff in it. We don't charge it. 
and that was done a long time ago. So for us to help the radio stay out, I can't see if they want to put a generator there. That's on them. The way, I, the way we always look at that, because we're not making no money off it. Now we do make money for, from like U.S. Cellular and all that kind of stuff, because they are that is our property. And we do charge them, but they charge us too for our, our equipment to be on there. Because like it's kind of a wash. I got a, I get a bill from uh, American Tower, and then then I build in. And so it's one of those deals. And it's like a hundred and fifty dollar difference. So good for us. So that's just kind of in the uh, cell site world. Uh, any questions about our cell? Uh, no, just just a quick point. Um, I know Barry, you've been working on the um, broadband stuff. Uh, the <coughs> dead engine footprint is quite small. If you want to ever increase that, I suppose you guys could go for like an amendment to that contract, I would imagine. Well, I'm not sure how we do our foot plan because there's buildings all around. There are, so I'm, so we're, we I'm not sure how you would be able to do There's no way, there's that. no room for our building just to build. I mean, if we wanted to expand that, I mean, we'd have to figure out, because we don't own that property up there. We just have to build it. That's Forest Service. Broadband's far from that phase yet. If you guys ever did build, if you wanted to build a larger tower, because that building is really small and you just have a pole, basically, is all you have. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to build a higher tower or something, you, you might end up needing a large footprint plan. But anyway, thank you. Yes. Parks. Parks and Rec is pretty easy. I only have. Uh, the Anna Reservoir project, I'm about done with it. All I've got left there is the pavilions to build, which we'll have those built here in March. So we'll be kind of done with that. I will be, we've got some stuff going on with the ski hill. I'm not sure where we're at with Sharon there. They've got an op, I have, or they have a state opportunity grant going on that they're working on. I was going to take my county opportunity grant put towards it there they kind of took the projects that i had in mind for the uh ski hill and they're putting it on this the state off the computer i don't even know really the acronym for it so th this spring or fall i want to put in for a county opportunity grant because the, the, parks, and rec, the parks and rec we just need to determine on what what we want to do because if if uh Ski Hill is going to do the project that I was going to do, which was great. I mean, they get it in there. great. We need to determine, okay, where, where do we want to enhance these dollars in our park system? Uh, lower Cottonwood, we got crew, which we already granted that. Flush, you know, so we just kind of need to put our heads together to determine on what, what park we want to enhance even more. Well, we've had a lot of discussion over the years about parks and recreation. You know, we, we actually had a plan from way back in the day that was kind of put together. So just keep in areas. mind this opportunity grant, the county opportunity grant, who doesn't reflect around trails, it reflects around campsites, camping opportunity, right. camping recreation. Right. To, to do this, you have to have campsites, whatever that is okay. Uh, so you can't go do trails with it. You can't, it, it doesn't let you do that. Good so keep that in mind too. Anyway. Let's see. And then uh, on my marine side, my marine, which is all, which is Lower Cottonwood, uh, Drews, and Anna Roosevelt boat dock, not the not the recreational side, but the boat dock itself, the boat ramp itself. We got some repairs I want to do on the, the boat dock at Anna. I want to get a little bit more handicap accessible. Looking at that, there's some things I want to do there. And that's not under grant, that's just under our general marine dollars that we get every year. At Anna? At Anna. 
Uh, and then there's a little bit of, of rock that I'd like to put in Drew's uh, due to there's no water. And at the end of it, when people do want to get their boats of water, the dog don't reach the water and they got a big drop off. So what I want to do is I don't bring in a four or five belly vent full of big rock and put it at the end of the, the ramp. So if people do need to get to the water when it's low, it kind of helps them. They don't get stuck. And, I can't afford to see man, so. Might want to make sure we discuss that with the water users. Yeah. Before we implement anything like that. Because now people do it, they get stuck in traffic, I'll tell the truck turn in the water unit out of the boat. Mm -hmm. So then that's just stuff I'm looking at. It, I don't know, I just, you know, because we don't get a whole lot of dollars from rain. Very little bucks. thousand bucks. Yeah. What's the ADA stuff that you're thinking about out of Anna? Just some handrails. Some right now, if someone got away with their wheelchair, they drive off the end of the, the ramp. You need at the end, at the end of the ramp, you just put a box in there where they can run their wheelchair up, sit there, and they can fish off the dock. Or by law, you're supposed to have that anyway for a handicap. It's just so. They don't drive off the dock if they're driving their wheelchair down the dock. Because I've had people ask about that. You know, they they go out there, but they're nervous because there is no bumpers, or which that's what I would do: put bumpers all the way down the rail too, and then put a platform, a fence thing around the end of it. And then again, that's just plans. It's not set in stone. You know, we can change that. No, oh, I'm just thinking. I mean, you know, as someone who lives up there, you know, I always get the heat every time something changes. You know, is it my fault if someone doesn't like it? And if they do like it, you know, it's like, oh, great job. But that doesn't happen as often. So, uh, <laughs> so I just, I mean, I, I've, I've seen it. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone go off the end of the wheelchair, no. but I have seen people drive a small Volkswagen Beetle out on the very edge of that and dive off the hood on into the lake. Um, it's <laughs> absolutely incredible that they were able to get it back out onto the land. <coughs> but um, I've seen it, been there, I've been yelled and screamed out when I took on, I told them they had to leave. But um, I just want to make sure I'm communicating with you and I have a better idea of what your vision is too. Uh, fairgrounds. We, as you guys know, we hired, we hired some Seth Bus, as you guys all know. Uh, he's our new hire out there. He's doing a really good job. I mean, there's some stuff he needs to work on, but I mean, we all do when we first start somewhere, just learning the way things work. Uh, where we've working on a water sewer line out by the arena, or not by the arena, by the roundup. Mm -hmm. Towards the back there, we put a whole new system in there to, with the cover or so uh, lakey sanitation don't fall through it when they're backing up. Got that fixed. Uh, so we're, we're getting a lot of stuff down there. Just we've got the shop cleaned out. We've got just a lot, of, a lot of stuff like the board. I know the fair board isn't seeing because it was not in their face. So we're trying to get winter stuff, we're trying to get that in this spring. As soon as the, it warms up, and once we get through uh, March, we're going to start working towards fair. I mean, we're, we're going to turn water on come April. We're going to make sure everything's working for the fair. I mean, fair is going to be ready June 1st. You want that's our goal, and what I mean by that is the stuff that needs to be. Yeah, we can't do the stuff the week before stuff, but we can do the making sure that the water lines are fixed, we're not having leaks, sewer lines aren't plugged up, all that. So there, we got a plan for the fairgrounds. And you removed that fence and everything. Yeah, right there along the highway. And removed that old rickety fence that was falling down. And I'm not sure what the fair board is going to do there. That's that's what they end up doing. 
back there. That's right. You guys burned some piles last week. Yeah, we burned a big pile. How's the uh, the well with reeking by water? Pumps good. Why did we got All the pumps work and get in there. Yeah, one project we got left is uh, we got to run uh, strong enough uh, electric electricity to the pump. We're getting by with what we got. <clears throat> this spring we got to run another phase of line to the pump to sustain it without it kicking the breaker. So, but we waited till spring because the ground. Well, we couldn't get to it. We was going to do it. And then with the fire, everybody there doing the fire right after fair, we couldn't get to it. And then the cold weather hit. And I just. Joe uh, McIntosh said, just leave it until spring and we can get it, it'll be fine. And it has, we haven't had those issues. But we do need it. When it starts picking up, when people are really getting water going, we need to make sure we have the right electrical wire to it. To have your, have your wire. And then I saw the truck driver who picked up the parts that were fixing the solar panels that don't point in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So that's eventually going to get fixed. Yeah, we're waiting for the replacement to come back to get fixed for the last solar, which could, which helps save costs. Yeah. It's about two hundred bucks a month that we're missing out on. Fix, replace nine toilets. About nine toilets. And fix the sewer line so the first time in history the ferry didn't have a septic problem. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be even better this year. And fix the water lines that you're talking about, um, north of the grandstands and between the you know, fifth and the arena. The solo, it's got a whole box, it's got a whole junction system in it. If anything goes wrong, you crawl down in there and you can work on it. Job. And we did it with uh, with no cost. I mean, a few, but we had the stuff laying around. So Jeremy took the old brick, and then we had those old uh, covers out at the man camp that are just sitting there, no one's using them. We took one of those, put it over the top of it with a manhole, with the ladder, you walk down there, you can work on stuff. And that's the count. You remodeled the uh, living quarters, and now yeah, uh, we're all probation. And the, the trailer's been all gone to, all the plumbing's fixed, all the heater ducts. I don't even know how whoever's living there before it survived because the heating ducts weren't even connected. connected. The, heat, the heat was just blowing straight to the ground. And they didn't they didn't tell us. You know, that they had, we were wondering why there was electric heaters all over the place. Well, that's how they heated it with the trailer. And all they had to do was let some gnome if you got into that, put the heating ducts together. Now the leak that's by the women's bathroom, by the 4-H concession, is that still leaking? That's been fixed too. That's been fixed too. Okay. And if you ever want to see everything that's been done, Jeremy's got a binder about this big of pictures, before and after. Everything they document. I have him, even Seth, whatever he does, he documents it now. So we have record of all of it. And the reason why we did the reason why we did there's so many people involved with the fairgrounds and fair board with you guys. There's yeah. so many people involved. It's just easier that way to help us remember and also, hey, this is what we're doing. Especially, you know, with kind of the, this unique situation, how we kind of are doing this with the with all the maintenance, it just kind of covers everybody's talent. Yeah. So hey, if anybody questions, well, they, if they don't feel they're getting what they think they should be getting, well, we can go. What do you mean? You got 60 hours of work right here in this week when you would only have gotten 37 and a half. Any more questions about the program? No. Okay. Courthouse. That's pretty simple. I was going to say something myself. Like, Let's get back to the courthouse. You're actually supposed to be working on. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm here. But yeah, I figured that was the next thing. Just kind of things we've worked off on in the last year. I mean, to be honest with you, the maintenance here has 
very minimal. It's mainly crisis management right now when the things break. We, we replaced everything here, so it's pretty much all new through the years. I mean, 10 years ago when I first started, it was water leaks, gel flooding, normal hall flooding, you know, so it, there, there was just a lot going on. But now we, we did the preventative maintenance program, so, you know, we still have issues here. Right? I mean, it's not, but it's, it makes it easier for us to do the parks, you know, because because back to the park line, here we've got to be responsible for the industrial park. We got to maintain that. I mean, the man camp, we got to mow it, make sure the railroad. We're we're responsible for mowing the railroad, even though we contract that. That's our part. Of, of, you know, we got to keep it clean. So there's a lot of mowing, a lot of outside stuff that we do with the park maintenance. You know, we once a week we got to go check bathrooms, wash toilets. So. That, that's just part of, and I put that in with the courthouse because that's kind of is on our schedule with the courthouse. Uh, but some of the projects we've done, we, we completed the juvenile floor and we try to do, through the years we've done a floor a year, you know, in a department. You know, we, the only, only one we have left is uh, the DA's office. And I won't put a new floor in until that dog goes. Right. Probably put, shouldn't put that, that's how I feel. I'm not even going to spend thousands of dollars on flooring. So sorry I said that. So no, I'm to, no, don't no, worry. Sorry. What's happening with that? Is, that, need, is that your your can opener? Do we need name? to send a letter to the attorney general's office? Yeah, it's, I've got a draft of it in my office. Let's get that done. Okay, we'll all sign. Sounds good. I have consensus from my board. <laughs> so the juvenile floor is done. Looks really nice. You guys get a chance to go down and look at it. I mean, they still got some stuff. Uh, uh, one of the counselors, his father-in-law passed away, so he hasn't been there to finish cleaning up the mess. But he will this week. Uh, so if you get a chance, go down and look at it. Uh, painted the men's and women's bathroom on this main floor up here, which should have been done a long time ago, but we finally got to it. It looks really good. Uh, we're continuing doing our general maintenance, our preventative maintenance schedule for the guys. Uh, janitorial, uh, we, we kind of revamped it or whatever you want to do that. We kind of changed it up a little bit. It's going to be, uh, we're actually interviewing Thursday. For the janitorial job. How many applicants you got? Three. Four. So we're only interviewing three. And then uh, we can finally completed our electrical box out there in the yard. I wanted you guys to know that. It's, that's all complete. Uh, And then uh, I would talk about the DA floor. Uh, we need to do some work in one of the bathrooms on the law, by the law library. We need to redo that, which that's what we'll get to. And then uh, I had to remove a tree. We had to have, have a tree removed down here this year. Mm -hmm. I always like to tell people when I'm removing a tree because there's sometimes people don't understand why we're removing the tree. They don't like it. But when it's about to fall over on cars and stuff. I got another one I got to do, that big one right over the sheriff's. Mm -hmm. That's not healthy if you look at the same clear out in the middle. It's clear hanging almost to the sidewalk across the street. Right. So we need to look at that too at some point because that's down the road. So. So that's kind of in the hand. And, uh, what do you call it? The so it's like we need to find you some more jobs. <laughs> Light maintenance at the museum. Yeah, we got yeah. So we got that. Looking at the ramp. We're we're looking into that. Yeah, so I didn't have that on my list. So sorry. It, 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 it's hard to put a handicap ramp there because of the distance from the road to the museum. So we've got to come out with another plan. We're not going to be able to go off where it is now. What I'm thinking is going off south side 
kind of go in that way where you can get your because it's an inch per it's an inch per 12 inches gotcha. yeah and that's not a whole lot of time if we were to do where it is now it'd be in the center of the uh, e street so we just kind of got to figure that out get it in here and then start working on that <coughs> if i just to repair the one we got now we might be able to get away with it but but it doesn't mean the it don't mean work I mean, we, I don't know, that, that grandfather thing, that's kind of went to the wayside. There is no such thing as a grandfather thing anymore. Yeah, it's grandfathering. Especially if you're going to have to tear it down to rebuild it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, any other questions? No, I have anything else. Dave, I just want to say I really appreciate you coming and giving us the department update. Today. Well, it was time because I know I don't feel you guys. There's probably some things on here you probably didn't even know that I dealt with. I, I don't, don't know. know. You're terrible at communicating, but we really appreciate you. Well, long as, as long as you're not getting complaints about me, then it's okay, right? I just say I wasn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the thing that maybe we just need to cover too is we're really working hard with DQ on the landfill. Yes. Well, I, I might as well talk about it. Yeah. I met with DEQ yesterday. Yesterday? No. It was last week. Right? Yeah, last week. I can't remember. Yeah. It happened to me at my age. And, and, then, and so when, when they did that closure on the 412 permit closure at the landfill, they started this. Kevin Hawk started, turned in all the stuff. Right? And that in the transition of not only the county switching managers, DEQ switch. People. So they went through nine people from the time Kevin Hawk was down until I was down. There was nine people that we counted up yesterday. I met with Kevin yesterday to go over some of this. There was nine people that were working. He gave me the names of the stuff that he sent in, the closure, construction plans, and all that. But it never got back to Todd. Todd Hess can't find him anywhere because of the DEQ. He, he apologizes and says, uh, we can't find it. We don't know. And then they switched offices with this COVID and everything. They just, so they lost. So it's just much as fault. But anyway, we, we've got to go back through and do some stuff on the closure that wasn't done. When you do a closure, it's like a, it can be anywhere from a seven to 10 year process. It's not a, hey, we're going to go close that, put three foot of dirt over it and be done. Well, there's testing to be done, all kinds of testing. I mean, you've got to do a layer, you got to do a, uh, What's the name of it? A test that you have to check for your nitrogen mm -hmm. into the soil to make sure that growth, that things are going to grow there when you see it when you get your three foot. You know, because you might, that top layer might have enough nutrients in it, but that layer underneath it might not. So there's a lot of tests that you have to do as you're doing it. I mean, it's a, it's a step. Okay, you got that done, then you go to that. Once you get that approved, you go to that. And that wasn't done there, of course. It was once, once everything got going, they just, Took three foot of dirt and covered garbage. Well, it wasn't, it's not even elevation. I mean, some of us thought we're eight foot high. Luckily, the DEQ is going to let us, they're going to exempt that. They don't care about the elevation, but we do have to have three foot of cover over it. And appropriate cover. Appropriate cover. So now we're, tomorrow I go out and drill in 18 holes. We're doing tests. We're trying to do everything that takes five years to do all in one day. So it's kind of a, it's a pain. And what we need to do is slow down. We didn't need to hurry up with covering this. We're okay. We're in our guidelines. Well, for some reason, somewhere in between that, everybody got panic. Yeah. 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 And not only with the county, but the EQ as well. Yeah. But right. we're on the right track. We're on that. The EQ is totally on our side. They're willing to help us in any way they can. As long as we show progress of doing it, if we sit there and go, oh, they don't care and not do nothing, well, then we're going to get hit with a fine. We are going to get hit with a warning, a fix it warning letter stating you're out of compliance, not out of compliance, you didn't follow the right procedures to cover this. Do it right. If they can get all the tests and all that, then. But they have to let us know that just for the chain of. Well, exactly. Because he didn't want to do it. Todd told me, he goes, right. I don't want to do this. And I go, no, that's. That's what you do. And yeah. All it does is motivate us and, and it just gives us a fix it and it makes us fix it. Right. So 
It's not a bad thing. Yeah, you you know, we got it on our record, but still. Oh, maybe we'll find a use for some of those chips, too. Well, that's, yeah. I, I, I wish we weren't putting C and D in the C and D in the, in the pit, but that's somewhere along the way. Someone changed that and started doing it. Well, it didn't help with the soil there on those cover, on that cover, so, you know, you have to use it somewhere in those layers. <clears throat> Rearrange things is great. So, but we have the EQs really working with us, and then we, I still got the tire issue. I cannot, and I talked to the recycle guy. He said, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried calling, no, no call back, no nothing. So, we're gonna have to start hauling tires, yeah. And, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. If we just if, if we show that we're starting to remove them, the EQs gonna leave us alone. But if I sit on them, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, right? So, what I want to do, I want to take Tires we got, leave them there. Don't add no more tires to it. Except the pile of stuff we get now, and and work on this pile. And then when this this pile over here gets to 100 tires, get them out of here or less. I mean, if I'm taking a trip, throw some in. We keep that, and you know, just uh, let's, let's keep the EQ up. Because I've got until September to get tires on it. Because I was warned in September. He said you got a year to get to be done. And, uh, and when it gets closer, I will call. This is a different EQ guy. This isn't the same. Todd has this is, guy, yeah. Harry, tire stuff. Harry, he does tires. So I just stuff that I got to start hauling it. I'm not sure. But throwing it back with picking, take a trip, or what? Appreciate it, Dave. Good right. work. Thank, Thank you, Dave. And the moral of this is, I you know, like I said this to you. I mean, I know you guys are busy, but I also need your guys' help too. Like, you know, sometimes I don't have answers, or I can't think. It's I mean, you guys are you're doing what you can, but I do, I do need you guys to think about things too and help me too. Right. So, whatever that is, I mean, it's it's uh, there's a lot sometimes that it ain't. I mean, I know obviously I can handle it. It's just at times. I need help with an answer because I don't always have the answers. Well, you're taking a vacation here, so oh, yeah. by the time you get back, we'll have it all fixed. Done it, nothing on it. Okay, good. <laughs> I come back to the smooth as pie, right? You said it, not me. <laughs> and then, just so you guys, for your notes, I'm leaving the 28th and I'll be back on the 10th. And I'll be quite honest with you, I probably won't think of you guys at all. Mine's <laughs> on. That's not good. You guys are both face line. No, it is. <laughs> I'll be wondering what all three of you guys are doing. What kind of, How we're messing everything up. Yeah, what kind of circus I'm going to come back to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll leave you that to your imagination. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Thank all right. Do you guys have anything else for the good of order? No. Um, I think that if Darwin comes and sees us tomorrow, we need to talk about our... Uh, Renewable Energy Committee, I still think that there's not clear direction. And we need, I know you gave a list to that group, but I don't think they still don't quite have clear direction on what their challenge to try to come up with. So I might be thinking about that a little bit. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. And Naomi, will you get in touch with Jason? To make sure he's here. Um, can we talk about this after the meeting? Sure, can. So, as the meeting goes, 11 20 or 40, 30, I'm sure. Thank you. I just go prepare for that test. We should make sure that's on first.